Carr's work on the countryside was full of surprises. But she was frightened of bulls and cows, and she remained very lazy and stubborn. never been to the quarry before. He began ordering the freight cars about. Hurry along, he said. The freight cars grumbled to each other. This is Toby's place. Percy's got no right to poke his funnel up here and push us around. They whispered and passed the word. Pay Percy back. Pay Percy back. Come along, puffed Percy. No nonsense. We'll give him nonsense, giggled the freight cars. They followed so quietly that Percy thought they were under control. Suddenly they saw a notice. All trains stopped to pin down brakes. Beep, beep. Brakes conductor, please. But before he could check them, the freight car surged ahead. at the crossing rushed to warn traffic with his red flag, but it was too late to switch Percy to the runaway side. Try, said Sir Topham Hatt, to run the branch line with Toby and a diesel. You have put us in an awkward predicament, Percy. I am sorry, sir. You must stay there till we are ready, continued Sir Topham Hatt. And you really must be more careful with freight cars. Percy sighed. The freight cars groaned beneath his wheels. He quite understood about awkward predicaments. Sir Topham Hatt spoke severely to Daisy, too. My engines work hard. I send lazy engines away. Daisy was ashamed. However, Toby says you worked hard after Percy's accident. So you shall have another chance. Thank you, sir, said Daisy. I will work hard. Toby says he'll help me. Excellent. What Toby doesn't know about branch line problems isn't worth knowing. Our Toby's an experienced engine. Day, Thomas came back. And Percy was sent to the menu. Annie and Clarabelle were delighted to see Thomas again, and he took them for a run at once. herself. That shows you, doesn't it?